we will continue on, on safety. Because how do we monitor that CO2 is safely stored underground? How do we verify it? And how do we keep track on the movement of CO2 in the rock formations? Anna Strömmen Lykke has been invited here to talk about how technology that is used to detect earthquakes and nuclear explosions can be applied to monitor CO2 storage. Anna, welcome. The stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much for the possibility to speak about some perspectives on safe uh, storage. First, a couple of words about Norsar. Uh, we are an independent private uh, research institute and we monitor the earth. That means that we have stations around uh, the Norwegian uh, uh, territory uh, with our basic technology being seismology, monitoring the Earth's movement. We also monitor the movements of the atmosphere through infrasound, and we collect radionuclide molecules to see if there has been any nuclear explosions. So what we do, what our core business is, is to monitor the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. And we have been doing that for the last 50 years. We have a 24-7 system with, with the station collecting data automatically, processing automatically, and alarming. And um, we are reporting and working for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in this, and we are representing Norway in the governing bodies of the Test Ban Treaty Organization. And as a fun fact to this, it takes 10 minutes from the guy in the North Korea has blown up one of his bombs until we have it on our PC and we verify it. And we can call the ministry and say, sorry, it was a bomb. Uh, no, guys, it was just an earthquake. So that is the technology that we are uh, ready to deploy uh, into the CCS uh, value chain. And this is a test, uh, well-tested and proven technology, and we think um, that uh, this business of storing CO2 is becoming very important, both as a climate abatement, but also as a new business for Norway. And we would very much like to secure it and see it successful. So, are there any risks to this business? I think we have seen that we have a very competent operator. We have very competent comp companies working to enter this sector. So that's not the issue. But the issue may be that there are some real geological risks to it, and there are some perception problems and challenges. And I think one of the um, things that we are in the midst of now is a low probability, high impact uh, situation with the pandemic. An earthquake in the North Sea is the same by concept. Low probability, very high impact. You need to take care of that. And you need to take care of the perception of it. And what we have learned from projects both in uh, Canada, the US, and in Netherlands is that injection will create micro earthquakes, micro seismicity, and the cracks uh, migrate. And if you take the cracks from uh, the, the dotted line here, for, by the way, is from um, the Quest project in Canada, where you can see that there are small cracks, quakes coming, they come in waves and swarms, and they have a radius. If you take the radius and put it on top of the aurora well, you're into troll. Doesn't happen tomorrow, doesn't happen the first year, but we don't know. The likelihood is small, but we don't know. And what happens to perception with this? Many of these things are open data, open source, low resolution. Uh, that happened to the Groningen field and operator. The credibility problem is huge if you are not open and if you don't have a third party verification into this. It's important to secure the business case, and it's important then to be able to distinguish with a high degree of credibility, not only technically, but also from the sender of the message. Is it a natural earthquake? 
Is it depletion from troll, or is it the injection in Aurora? We can distinguish that with high degree of credibility. We have an uncertainty within 10 minutes on the location of a nuclear explosion in North Korea on the other side of the globe, 450 to 200 meters. So this is proven and available and could help secure this business. And you know, there is uh, maybe the largest real risk is the perceived one. CO2 storage is not debated in Norway, not much. Everybody is in favor. Everybody knows that these are handled by good companies. But we need to attract uh, foreign customers. We need to have this a sustainable business over time. We need to deal with the perception problem. Some even go to the length and say that this is just something that the oil and gas industry figured out and are doing to secure their own business line. What an idea. But I think it, the main message from us is that we are ready and able to use the credibility, the network and the technology from the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty into securing the credibility of that the CO2 storage is safe, the CO2 stays in place. Or we could always say where it migrates. So on the back of these uh, challenges, we are proposing a smart monitoring concept and the idea behind it is, of course, to create trust, both towards the perceived risks with public perception, but also to take care of and monitor the bigger geological risks. And we think it has a great value to the concept uh, for Norway to be able to have an independent party on arm's length saying, yes, this is good to go. So our proposal is that we make the monitoring system that is uh, in place now on a temporary basis in Øygarden, permanent, and that the seismology is the core of a monitoring system that is very affordable, very easy to handle, proven technology, and built into a digital twin where we could add complementary technologies as we go. That could be used to not alert the public, not to make a scare, but to cooperate with the authorities and the business line to say if there are any mitigating actions to be taken, that needs to be taken by the operator, by all means. And of course, as we know, the NPD will follow up the operator and the operational side, so that's not our task. We won't meddle in their business, but we will be a complementary source of information to them that could be used. We also think it would be a very good idea to have this as a European network. And our partners in the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty are the government bodies that are also into CO2 storage verification in their countries. So our partners in the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty are these logos that you see here, and they are also into CO2 storage verification in their respective uh, countries. And that could easily be built into a scientific network on the same model as we do for the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, where scientists get together, discuss methods, share methods, develop a methodology, and create trust across the business line. To further enhance that activity, we have been awarded a EU project recently, which we are very proud of, called Ensure. Uh, to document the microseismic uh, technology that we have uh, and its value to uh, CO2 storage sites. Our partners there, you can see on the slide, uh, Shell, Total, BP on the industry side, and also Alcatel with fiber technology, which is very promising and further brings the cost of the technology down. And uh, not least, there will be a package in this uh, project that will map public perception in selected countries over the next year or so. To further strengthen our competence and our uh, ability to deliver this, we have teamed up with Sintef. Sintef has a fabulous technology base in the digital twin 
uh, development that would be very, very useful in securing uh, all technologies that could help verify the integrity of the storage. As you can imagine, we have discussed this around with a lot of stakeholders, and uh, our proposal is very simple. Let's get moving. Let's make the uh, uh, seismology network in Øygarn permanent. Let's start collecting data for real, and let's start building a digital twin and establish the European network. We think that Norway and Norshar has a unique position in this uh, uh, technology and in this uh, business line. So we should take the lead and be able to bring this network to life in a very short time. So thank you for listening to us. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>